All right, what's up, everybody? So we're going to be doing a quick uh, presentation regarding about cold calling. The this is just if we are cold calling sellers, cold calling buyers, uh, cold calling just anybody. Uh, this is for more for those who are more visual, and this is going to be strictly just for cold calling uh, sellers. Um, if you're making some cold calls on a daily. Uh, reaching out to anybody who's interested on selling so this is more for those who are more visual oriented um, so it's basically going to be like a role play some of the things that you should be focused on whenever you're making some call calls so that we can get a sense of how to negotiate how to handle some objections um, and also how to progress if somebody that you're call calling that is interested on selling like their home uh, this is not with any agents or anybody um, i mean it's available for everybody but it's just like strictly um not for for buyers who are investors or anyone who's wholesaling uh, agents they do uh, call calling a little bit different uh, but they still also answer some uh, they still ask some of these uh, key questions over here so we're gonna go through it so first things first you start calling in uh, people uh, of course if they do have it to pick up you could uh, off the off the bat say the name of the person that you're reaching out to you can say the first name last name or you can say uh hello mr uh smith mr uh john smith and from there you uh, if they happen to be the right person um this is basically what they would say yeah you're gonna be telling like yes who's this or who's calling uh, of course, introduce yourself. If you do have like a, a company that you work for, you can mention the company. But off the bat, it's going to be like this where you say, Hi, John. Uh, my name is Jason. My partner's out. We buy properties locally. I was calling about your property. I believe you own on one to three Main Street. Do you happen to be like the owner of that property? Uh, sometimes you're going to get no. So it's like, no, this is not John Smith. Uh, but still, even though you get your first no, do not just accept that first no uh, don't just uh, reject it and uh, accept it and reject it um, just take your shot open up the doors uh, and see if there's an, op an opportunity there and just say oh do you happen to know mr uh, john smith by any chance or are you the owner of the property on 123 main street then it's gonna be like a two scenario thing based on their answers yes i actually i do know him what's this regarding uh, well, great. I was looking for him or her because I'm interested in purchasing property 123 Main Street uh, from him. Uh, do you happen to have like his cell phone number so that way I can reach out to him? When it comes to this, when you're asking that question, most of the time you are, they're going to be like, oh, uh, no, I can pass over the message over to him and have him reach out to you. Um, the best way to handle that is basically by letting them know, well, look, I, I really appreciate like the gesture, uh, most of the time, whenever I'm like reaching out to like, uh, owners, uh, homeowners, uh, I'm not sure if you're the homeowner of this property or you just happen to know him maybe cause you're related to him or whatever. But whenever I get like that message that, oh, I have him reach out to you or have her reach out to you, uh, we never actually get a, a call back or anything like that. So then we have to call you back again and see if you happen to relay that message over to that person. Um, it'll be best if I can get like any type of a contact. It could be email, it could be a phone number or something. So that way I can reach out to him directly and get a direct response from him. So that way I don't have to bother you again. If they happen to say that they don't know that person whatsoever, then just let them know. I completely understand. Um, I thank you. Appreciate like your time. But do you happen to own any properties or any land yourself that you might be interested in selling by any chance? So again, you're still taking an opportunity, even though they said no already twice. Uh, and then from there, see how it goes. If it does happen to be like the person that you are getting in touch with, and they're like, "Yes, this is John Smith," um, then and they are interested in like on selling like a property. Um, most of the time, you, you're you going to go through like all those notes. Uh, so no, uh, I'm not interested in selling. Um, oh, where's that? Where's that? Oh, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get back to this. Uh, most of the time, they might be, uh, say no, uh, that they're not interested in selling. But the time that you do get yes, this is basically going to be like the scenario. So they could say yes. Well, awesome. Well, I was calling to see if you consider like an offer on that property. And then you go to get some responses uh, from here. Uh, first one's going to be yes. Uh, next one's going to be like, how much would you give me? And maybe in the future, 
no, I'm not interested in selling. How'd you get my number? And who are you again? So we're going to go through all those um, responses from now. So the first one, yes, of course, we'll get back to that one. Uh, how much would you give me? Well, off the bat, you got to let, um, if you're trying to give yourself out already from the beginning, well, how much you want to give me? You can't just give out a number just yet. You want to get to know a few key things. So that's why you have to, your response has to be like, well, great. Uh, i pretty interested in um, buying like the property, but I do have some questions uh, really quick so I can get to know like a little bit like about the property. And then we're going to go through those questions in a second. If they happen to say maybe in the future, it's a two part question over here where first, like, OK, that's OK. Like how far in the future are you, are you trying like to like sell uh, three weeks, a month, two months? Uh, how far like get give them like a time frame so that way you can get like a time frame of when maybe you should be reaching back out again um and then just go from there um or if they say maybe in the future they're like oh i don't know uh, when i'm gonna be selling when you just let know well i really appreciate like your time but if uh, whenever you are interested in like on selling um just say my contact information as jason cashbuyer john cashbuyer whatever your name is and then just in case anything changes and have uh, you just let them know when you're gonna be following up with them as well too if they happen to say like no, I'm not interested in selling, and then you can say, oh, okay, gotcha. Uh, do you happen to have like any other properties that you'd be interested in selling uh, by any chance? And again, if they say no, then just let them know. Thank you, I really appreciate your time. Uh, sometimes you go to get aggressive people that are, are very uh, sensitive to like having them get reached out by their cell phone, a landline, maybe even work sometimes whenever you're doing like the skip tracing. So the that you are gonna get sometimes they're gonna ask you strictly or you're just very harsh oh how'd you get my number there's my personal cell number or whatever and just let them know well look we we buy properties locally so we use a third-party company that we sent over addresses they're the ones who do the research see if they happen to have any information whatsoever we pay for like their services and, and whatever information they're able to collect then we uh, we make attempts it's never a guarantee so it's always um just uh an option that we have where it allows us to reach out people if there happens to be like any type of contact information and then today i just happen to reach out to you because uh, again my, my partners and i we we buy pro uh, a lot of properties locally and then just go from there about getting to know like how interested they are if they're selling uh next one is who are you and again just let me know well again my name is uh, jason john whatever your name is uh from this business if you happen a business uh name if you want to give out that out whatsoever uh, so again we buy homes locally uh, we buy them cash and we also buy in other states and we usually like remodel homes we fix and flip them uh, sometimes we rent them out as well too depending on like areas um, and that's why i was reaching out to you today just to see if you'd be interested in selling your property so going back to the uh, first uh, the first response is yes um the main one that you want to get all the time which is not always the answer that you're always going to get but if someone who's like answering yes 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 to like all your questions this could be like the path so you're gonna say well great um just to give you some context uh mr smith uh take your time whenever you're mentioning like everything i know i'm going like a little bit faster because again this is an educational video but the purpose of this is take your time don't hesitate. Uh, don't try to memorize everything. It will come out naturally. The more you practice, the more calls you get out there. But the way this will go is basically just let the seller know. Well, just to give you some context, again, we buy properties. We buy properties as is, like under current condition, without any updates or repairs. It is a cash offer. We pay like all the closing costs for you. And the best part, there's no agent's commissions whatsoever. So we just try to make it as convenient and uh, hassle-free as possible for you. Is that something that you're interested in? Or uh, how does that sound to you by any chance? And then again, if they happen to like it whatsoever, then of course, you just move on forward from there. Now, earlier there was one of the objections was, uh, or one of the key responses was, well, just whenever they tell you, well, how much are you offering is you got to get through some questions. So right now we're going to get through the questions, uh, some key questions that you should be asking. And it's not just going to be like a few of them. 
um, it's going to be quite a few, uh, it's not just going to be like one, two or three, it's going to be quite a few of them. So that way you're doing your due diligence and getting the most out of the, um, most out of the seller and then getting to know the most out of their property without actually having to go to the property because the you don't have time to go through 15 20 properties um every single day to like check them out and see what it is worth so especially if you're doing virtual wholesaling virtual investing or whatever it is uh, that you're getting into uh, regarding real estate but these are going to be the first key questions which is going to be about the property so these are going to be property condition questions off the bat, the first one's going to be uh, if you're looking on Zillow or Redfin or anything, just confirm with the seller. Well, Mr. Smith, on Zillow, it shows that the property is a thousand square feet. Is that still correct? Or did you happen to add extra square footage to the property by any chance? And whatever the response, just go from there. Just move through the questions very slowly. Take your time. Don't rush through these questions. Uh, great well what's the general condition about the house is it like is it a complete disaster is it like in fair conditioning good condition like how would you describe the condition of the overall ho uh, home um and they based on response all right beautiful uh, how old uh, oh it's a typo over here how old is the roof uh five ten years great how old is the uh, ac unit if it happens to have like an ac unit or uh, water heater uh, it's another option as well too uh how long uh ago how long ago were the bathrooms and the kitchen updated uh have you ever noticed any issues with like the foundation by any chance if you happen to like live in the property uh or which is leads to the next one do you live in the property or are you renting it out if they're renting it out well how much are you renting it out for mr smith beautiful next we're gonna get to the who what how uh, for how long have you like uh, for how long have you have you ever thought about selling like your home before by any chance or like get rid of it and maybe buy something else or have you ever thought about like just overall selling like the property how long ago has that been uh, typically uh, again set expectations um, based on everything you've signed so far it sounds like it's a it's a great property uh, usually when uh, we are buying properties we do have to close in about two to four weeks um does that time frame work well for you mr smith and again depending on their answer uh just go from there uh you don't happen to have like a number um so what the next question is trying to get like a number so you're getting to build that relationship you're getting to know the seller getting to know like the property uh, with a number of questions and then so far how the, uh, the conversation has been going at this point you basically want to try to get like a number and you want to do this multiple times uh, you can do this in the beginning of the call, uh, whenever you are, whenever you're getting a chance to like know them a little bit too, uh, or whenever you're asking the property conditions as well too. Try to get like a number, and maybe whenever you're handling like objections, try to get like a number uh, somehow, some way. The person who gives a number first is a person who loses. Uh, sometimes you are going to be in a losing position, but you can leverage that out and then make a comeback from it. But it's it's all about learning from experiences whenever you're making those calls. So, uh, Mr. Smith, you didn't happen to have like a number in mind that you want to sell the property for, did you? Uh, again, especially based on how we're going to be paying for like all expenses for you. So the cash offer that we'll be bringing over to you is basically going to be what you're going to be walking away with. Um, uh after title slash escrow closes do you happen to have a number in mind if they say no just let them know hey that's perfectly fine if they say yes again try to get that number well what would that number be and also ask them like how would you come up with that number sometimes they'll tell you like oh my friend's a real estate agent or i have a, a buddy who ha happens to like does fix and flips as well too so he'd let me know what the property is worth. so they'll tell you like a story and then dive deep into that story as well too um, another thing is, uh, do you happen to have like any mortgage payments left on, on the on the property to like take care of? If so, how much? If they want to disclose it, if they don't, it's perfectly fine. And are there any liens against like the property um, from any like solar, any repairs or updates or anything, any jobs or taxes as well too? Uh, those are liens. Um, now we're going to get to like the closing phase. The closing phase is basically try to wrap up everything. Uh, this is where uh, you're going to get like after collecting all the information. So, hey, Mr. 
Smith, based on all the information you, you had given me today, considering we will be taking care of all the closing costs, uh, again, close quickly and buy the property at its current condition. Our, car, uh, our current uh, uh, offer will be in a ballpark of give a range. Don't give a number, give a range below um, what your max offer will be. Um, so that way they can get like a sense of where you are. And then when you give that range, uh, just off the bat, ask him, how does that sound to you? And then we're going to get to objections. So this is where you start handling uh, some objections. This is where you start doing those. Uh, they're going to start giving you some rapid fire objections off the bat. It literally takes like a second for them to give a response, which is crazy. Uh, so we go go through some of these objections and those objections are going to be that's much lower than one but property is worth well mr smith uh how much do you think your property is worth um and then let them answer if you have some comps available let them know like hey well this property like behind you or a few blocks over sold for like this much a base uh, basically it's the same square footage as your property um and it sold for this much like a month ago uh, and again, our offer uh, does consider like various things like the property's condition, uh, the repair costs. Um, and again, uh, it's the offer that I just mentioned to you is in any way um, offending you or your property. It's just basically how we do our due diligence and then based on the factors that on how quickly and the cash offer that is going to be uh, for you. Um, well, without you t needing to like invest anything else or wait, uh, wait for like a buyer um, if you happen to be interested in putting the market uh, that property in the market, which leads to the next question: Well, all the properties in my area sell for that much, sold for much more. Well, that's great. Um, what properties have you seen that sold um, sold for a more that are? Uh, and then, do you happen to know? Um, also, if they happen to be like the same size and the same condition or where they fully updated, like somebody else that uh, that does the same thing as we do, that came in and updated the home and sold for a lot more than, than yours. Because that way I can reel it over uh, to my partners, let them know that there are some other properties in the same condition that did sell for a lot more than you offer. So that way we can reconsider or recalculate like our cash offer. But do you happen to have like the address of those properties? And again, mention our offer is based on like on the location. Again, some of the properties that sold lo uh, locally, how fast we close. And again, based on the commissions, everything, just keep on mentioning that. Um, uh, the next type of objection is I think I'll get a better offer if I wait or if I go through like an agent. Um, yes, going through an agent, it is definitely a route you can definitely go with. Um, but selling the home the traditional route could definitely uh, bring you higher offers. However, it also does come with uncertain uncertainties on how long it will take. Um, you could, again, you could be paying two agents commissions, buyers and sellers agent. Uh, you could pay your agent and, your, and the buyer's agents uh, commissions. You could be paying closing costs. And another thing too is how long is it going to actually take? to sell the property um, because again once you put it on the market the market is basically to give you a response because you uh, a lot of people are going to reach out to your agent and they're going to let the agent know our offer stands over here at this much and basically that's how the market is going to react to like your home based on its current condition because again we're interested in buying on its current condition because our our business model is basically updating the home and then just getting it back in the market or uh, renting it out if we see fit that it, it's best to rent out. Another uh, objection is I've invested a lot into like the property. Uh, the offer doesn't reflect that. Again, while uh, we're not able to match the emotional and the financial investment that you put in, we do aim to uh, give you a quick selling process. So that's where our cash offer stands on the quickness uh, of availability for you to get like the cash and just walk away from the property without having to do any further updates. Um, because again, we're, our, our offer is reflected on what's going on around the neighborhood. Um, the next one is I need to think about it. Um, this is very common. Uh, it's like, oh, I need, um, I need to think about it. 
just ask him like well if you need to do need to think about it about how long do you you think you need you need like a week like a month uh six months how long do you would you want to uh you would want to hold off based on this offer uh, whatever the response is let's say they say two weeks okay beautiful um if today was like two weeks later uh, what what do you think the difference will be? Is it more like a, about the selling process? Is it about the um, the the cash offer that you're getting, or is it about what's gonna happen after I sell my home? Are you is it like do you need to plan on where it is that you need to like live and everything? Because again, we can work things out, but what is it that you need to think about so that way i can we can know what kind of time frame we need to work because again a real uh, with the way that the market is going uh, things are changing like on a monthly basis so the offer that we're bringing over today will not reflect i cannot reflect um what it will be worth like in a month so again we don't know what the future holds nobody can predict the future uh if that was the case then it will be living in a whole different world but the uh the uncertainty is definitely out there so it, i can't guarantee you in, like in the future so try to communicate i try to have them communicate with you have them uh, what's like the reason that what's holding them back from getting started today because again we will definitely work the best that we can uh, with you mr seller so that way but we won't know how it is that we uh, we can best help you out if we don't know what's running through your mind and yeah, because another thing is uh, another objection, which you guys can see is I need to talk to my partner or my spouse is I needed to get like a second hand. Hey, I completely understand uh, Mr. Seller. Uh, I uh, sometimes whenever I need to make some decisions, big decisions as well, too. I do ask my uh, my wife about uh, or my partner about um, what is it that they think. <laughs> and the most common answer I get from uh, from her is basically well, whatever it is that you think I uh, like. Uh, whatever it is that you think I'll do like whatever you think is best let's just go with that so the pressure always comes back to like the main person who like who's leading and there's a leader and there's like a follower and so all the decisions always fall back uh, to me sometimes we have reason but um, do you, what is it that you think that your wife might be opposed to is it about the timing of selling is it about the cash offer uh, of selling um, I know you have to communicate that with, uh, with uh, your partner, but what is it that you think that will be like the main objection about it? Or do you think it's going to fall back again to you where uh, she's good, he or she's going to give uh, your partner is going to give you the, um, the same answer that I get all the time? It's up to you. <laughs> so those are all the, like the objections um, for for whenever you get in like a seller but again it's all about communication the more you communicate with your buyer um with your seller i mean then you just got to communicate from there if you do need like a like somebody else to like work with you like on a deal uh you can always reach out to me as well too um you can send me like a dm or anything and also um don't forget about uh using like the calculator and so that we can find reasonable um, uh, answers on where your offer could be at and everything and just go from there. But any questions you guys have, I hope this video was very educational for those who are more visual and more oriented in terms of um, whenever you're making some call calls out there. So kill your calls, handle those objections and try to get a deal close.